you know, it's not going well in many areas. But if we understand the scripture correctly, and if we honor God's presence correctly, there will always be the blessing of God in our lives. If you really look carefully, there will always be the outpouring of God's blessing. But there will always be the dealing of His Spirit with things in your life that is not in line. Amen. And you need to understand both. Oftentimes, you know, we work with people, different personalities, you know, so you might have a personality to say, you know, life is great, you know, it can't get better. You know, I'm just being blessed by God, you know, and I'm just moving from glory to glory. And because of your personality, you can be blind for the other side where God is saying, wait a minute. I'm a faithful father and because I love you I'm disciplining you and I'm talking to you for the last three months about this area in your life and you're just disregarding that because you're so focused on all the euphoria and everything that is going well and maybe you sit here this evening and you need to say Lord but I have been quenching your spirit in that area of my life you've been speaking to me for the past three months um, about this area and I've not been obedient and you need to become obedient in that area of your life or the flip side is also true you could, can sit here this evening and you can say you know I'm you know alles gaan net verkeerd you know I'm you know God is just disciplining me and I'm not getting breakthrough and I'm not you know I'm just being challenged by all the circumstances my friend if you're truly honest you would be able to recognize God's blessing on your life and the presence of his spirit it's always there it's always there all right you're not just you're just not seeing it but um you know maybe that's that's one aspect that um, that god just wants to highlight right so the first thing if we want to move into that glory that god has destined for us is to understand that the lord is the spirit and um, and where the spirit is the lord or where god's spirit is it needs to be present in every area of our life and we need to work with the agenda of the Holy Spirit, right? So, what is what is what is important? This is Father's Day today. You know, I oftentimes experience this with the students um, at varsity. You know, they um, not only at varsity. You know, all over. You know, um, you know oftentimes when you think about um, the the father concept, you know, or authority figures, we only think about the blessing and the nice things. But God is a good father. He says that if he treats us as true sons, God will discipline us. All right? And we need to embrace both parts of God's personality, if I can put it like that, bluntly like that. We need to embrace God's blessing. You know, he's a, a dad, like one student put it, and dad comes with wallets. All right? So God is a God that blesses. You know, he loves us, and he just pours out over us whatever he can out of his father heart. But he's not a God that spoils us, right? He's also a God that disciplines us. And so when you see stuff in your life, okay, but you can poiki for and do, you know, that's going to trip you in future. God will address that because He loves you. He will discipline you. And He oftentimes uses people around you to do that. And so, so if you sit here, you're not part of a cell group, you're not um, being transparent and, um, you know, giving feedback. To someone in your life that can give input I want to challenge you and say you know expose yourself start to trust the body of Christ you know to give input in your life because God wants to bring a discipline he wants to bring a pattern in your life that will bring you into that glory that he wants you to portray through your life amen, amen. right so it carries on you know we've read verse 17 now in verse 18 it says but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord now what does he mean with unveiled face and why is this important if we want to understand how to move into the glory of God you'll remember when Jesus died what happened to the curtain in the temple that separated the holy from the holy of holies anyone it tore into into two okay and then um, and so the separation between the holies and the holy of holies 
was, was um, torn, you know, that separation was broken the moment when Jesus died. And then when we read in Hebrew, it says that Jesus actually went with his blood into the real Holy of Holies, into heaven, and he presented his blood to the Father. And the Father accepted that as the perfect offer. Now you need to understand in the Old Testament, when someone sinned, they need, they, um, they, they sacrificed the animal, right? Kom help me goeie Peter, asjeblief. Alright, so, um, so when, when someone sinned in the Old Testament, they did something, alright? The blood of the animal just covered what was done. So, when something else was done, when something else was done, they, they needed to sacrifice another animal, right? And so throughout your... <laughs> it wasn't him. Alright. So as they went through their lives in the Old Testament, every sinful thing, and just by being human and sinful, they had to sacrifice and sacrifice and sacrifice and sacrifice to cover their tracks. Right? But what happened when Jesus died... Um, he went to heaven and he said God I'm taking all the sins of all the people from the beginning of time till the end of time I'm bringing it to you and I'm covering it with my blood and God said it's not only covered but it's taken away it's non-existent anymore if you accept the power of the blood of Christ which means, my brother and my sister, thank you, Petrus, what is standing here, when we behold, we do it as Moses did with an unveiled face. You see, oftentimes in the charismatic movement, we think that we must move from where we are into the presence of God, right? We must move into the Holy of Holies. We must move into the presence of God you know what we are actually moving from within the presence of God so we are not moving towards the Holy of Holies we are situated in the Holy of Holies we sit with God in heavenly places Leon and from that position that position of rest and that accomplishment of Christ we are moving forward right so in your life, you're moving from the position of provision. You move from the position of forgiveness. You move from the position of acceptance. You move from the position of peace in your life. And you need to understand this because otherwise you're constantly going to strive to get God's, to get God's forgiveness. And to, get God's, to earn God's provision. And to earn peace in your life. So you need to understand that the veil has been taken away. And when you look, you look from that place where you united with God in His presence. Amen? Emil spoke about um, last week in the morning service. If you, if you weren't there, just get the CD. It was an excellent teaching on, uh, on the way we look, the way we see determines oftentimes what we do. Right? And so if you look to your circumstances and you think that you are moving from a place separated from the Holy of Holies, that will determine and influence your actions. If you look differently, and you look from the presence of God, you will have perspective. Right? One example that he used um, was in Numbers 13, when the... What is for speeders in English? Help me. The spies. Oh, that was a difficult one. When the spies entered the promised land, only two of them had a godly perspective. The rest saw the circumstances. And he made the profound statement that faith is seeing the picture that God sees. You see, if you want to move into the glory that God has got for your life, you need to see the picture of God. Otherwise, you're not going to give yourself for the process. You're going to hold back. 
and God says that um, someone that is divided in his heart is unsuccessful in whatever he does so when we in the when the, we in the presence of God Keith God says that you see my picture and you go for it because you trust me amen and we need to understand this we need to understand this I believe that's why the Spirit of God laid a huge emphasis on the prophetic ministry in this past month in our midst amen because the prophetic ministry is simply the divine will of God and the interpretation thereof you know we see I mean I need to remind this man about the picture that God sees for him in his life and I need to remind him constantly want ons raak moedeloos ne I mean ek raak moedeloos ja like jylle na my heilig ne maar you know we get discouraged in our lives and so we need the prophetic in the prophetic we see what God sees we see the picture of glory we see where we should be we see the the level where we should pitch and um, and we encourage one another to say kom my broer nee man kom Daniel ja man moet nie so like nie jong hier het 'n great plan met jou lewe hy het 'n great plan met jou lewe okay moet nie so like nie kom 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 you know we need to remind one another you know i was so blessed um, on uh, when was it on wednesday one of our cell members just came in there uh, with a huge packet of rusks beskuit you know en kyk as jy my wil omkoop moet jy vir my beskuit gee you know <laughs> en uh, ja sê amen amen and i was just so blessed because you know i i didn't i didn't have a, had a good day on on wednesday it was difficult a lot of challenges and everything and just by that act of obedience i just experienced god says you know I can you young I can you and you know I know I know um, just how to bless you and how to um, how to treat you hint hint wink wink you know Nia flat me flat me um you know but just by that act of obedience um you know I was so encouraged you know I was just reminded about the glory yeah so um so we need the picture we need the picture you know um i just wrote down here maybe you can write it down colossians chapter 3 um the creare students know you know bedink die dinge wat daar boe is you know think the things that is above and not on earth all right because the things on earth will often times steal your focus and it will steal your destiny and it will it will rip away and steal away the glory that God has got for your life all right i mean i've been um for those of you who do not know i work at the university and one one aspect that became very prominent or one theory that became very prominent in the last year or so is um is that of positive psychology it's very different than positive thinking you know it's just simply saying that you know instead of focusing on all the wrong things in psychology focus on what is good you know the strengths of people etc etc martin zeligman is um is the guy that pioneered it and you know what um because the world understands this and took this principle you know that guy has been um commanded by the U- united states army to give training to all the corporals and everyone in the army to be embedded in thinking differently and the general of the US army said that i want my men mentally fit as fit as they are physically they must be mentally fit to be able to face the challenges of the battlefield my brother my sister if the world can understand the the power of focus i mean how much more we that live in the presence of our almighty god that loves you so much but often times we cripple ourselves by the way we think and uh, the way we focus you know you all know that story of the turkey and the eagle i mean you can be a eagle god can make you a eagle you know destined for great things but if you think of yourself as a turkey you will never reach the heights for what god created you to reach 